What's up, 2K crew, and welcome to episode 56. Everyone that's on the YouTube, you see a little bit more, a little different perspective. I'm going to try this out, kind of see how it goes. I'll kind of get you more up close and personal and intimate with 2Ks and I. Whether you think that's a good time or not is totally up to you, but we're going to give it to you anyway. So yeah, 2K crew, it is episode 56. And for those of you on YouTube, go ahead and give us a like, share, share this episode around, and go ahead and subscribe. And everyone on the audio side, wherever you get your podcast material, go ahead and give us a sub subscribe, a like, and leave, leave a review, and we will read it on the show. Well, 2Ks, man, it's uh, it, it was kind of hard to nail down a specific topic for this week because there's a lot of shit going on. Mm -hmm. You know, like we like we talked about last week, we've got baseball started, we've got March Madness upon us, and the NFL Combine, and just a bunch of cool shit. Just a bunch of cool shit. So, 2K Crew, what we decided to do was, I, I, I know we gave you our mock draft, but now, at kind of, because this is post-Combine, and the, we're, we're recording on Sunday, and I think the only ones left to do, left to go are the defensive backs today. We've had the quarterbacks, we've had the wide receivers, we had all the, we had a punter just blow some shit out, <laughs> which was fucking awesome. But with with that being said, you know we we're gonna expand upon that, and we're not only gonna give you, we're, we're gonna give give you our version of the quarterback carousel. So this is two K two K approved, stamped, bam. This is a, this is pretty much gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, is, is what I'm thinking. You know, all of our hours of research, and just, I mean, we put Mel Kiper to shame. How much, how much tape we've watched, how much <laughs> research we do, and by that I mean about a half an hour before the show. So, did you get to, did, did you get a chance to watch any of the combine? Uh, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. I'm not much of a combine fan, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, I think it's all kind of a. <laughs> It's just, it's just something to give a lot of you know, give people to, something to talk about. You oh know? yeah, people are. Oh, yeah. maybe, you know, football season's over and people are getting, are itching to still want to talk about it. And uh, it just for to me, there's too many other good things going on right now. College basketball, oh absolutely, baseball starting up. I don't get into the to the the hype of this of the combine all that well. Um, I'm more of uh, you know let's let's watch the game films and and yeah. go off of that. Well, I'm I'm usually the same way, but it was for the I don't remember ESPN doing this, but they just put it on mm -hmm. for like four hours straight every day, which I thought was rather weird. I did catch the quarterbacks and the receivers. Um, I can't remember which day that was, like Thursday or Wednesday, some shit like that. But one thing that stood out, and you know, there's a the the good part about the combine is there's a lot of players that were maybe kind of on the edge. You know that either second, third round tier or first, second round tier that mm -hmm. it's their opportunity to kind of make some waves, put themselves on the map, or just come out and shock the shit out of everybody. And one of the guys, he's uh, he's a punter from Arizona State. His name is Michael Turk. This dude, I want to say that the it, it was quoted that he has arms like logs. And what that means is the dude is fucking jacked, for one. I've I've never seen a punter this put together. Like, he looks like a linebacker. Mm -hmm. And speaking of that, he put up 25 reps of 225. Now, to kind of put that, put that into perspective, that was more than all tight ends except for two <laughs> and was more than three offensive linemen. Hmm. And what was most what kind of shocked me the most is he he wasn't doing the I'm not saying they were perfect reps he didn't lock out every time but they weren't half reps and all kinds of others you know bouncing it off your chest like a lot of these guys do so 25 reps at 225 I think the best I've ever done is maybe nine so just just kind of put that in mm -hmm. put that into perspective but as far as the quarterbacks are concerned man there was a there was some kids a Jalen Hurts had a very good combine, mm -hmm. and that was on on the on the tail end of a lot of teams asking him, "If we draft you, are you hell bent on being a quarterback, or can we use you in some other option?" I the kid throws a pretty ball; he really yeah. does, and it looks effortless. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, well, hell, all these guys, I mean, when they uncork one for like 60 yards, kind of looks effortless. Mm-hmm. But they're right. You know, he's not their, the prototypical 6'3". I, th- I thought it was huge for him, though, um, you know, getting the season with Lincoln Riley in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lincoln Riley has kind of proven himself as – Somebody that can that, that's very very you know well respected and can prepare prepare guys for the NFL level, mm-hmm. and you know if Hertz stays at Alabama, I don't think that we're even really talking about him going into the no. into the uh, to the draft. Well, there, if you look at the offenses now, with Tua be, behind the controls, you know Saban was kind of forced to open the offense up a little more, just based on a the trio of fucking receivers that were there. And then, you know, like I said, Tua, you know, it's not the run first, you know, Greg McElroy led, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just, of course, then with, with, the, with those teams, I mean, you had the running backs oh, going yeah. top, you know, Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram and Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the and, list goes on. And now we're seeing what Derrick Henry can actually mm-hmm. do and how much of a man child that, that, that dude is. So... In, in that essence, I totally agree with you because if he stays, if Tua never shows up, there's still that ground and pound yep. where there isn't ground. The ground and pound aren't two words in the Big 12. Mm-hmm. It's air this shit out mm-hmm. and let's fucking go. Mm-hmm. And he, I, I thought he adapted his game rather well. You know, one of his big, one, one, of the, one of his big knocks in Alabama was he's not an accurate passer. He's not a great passer. Granted, the defenses are totally different from the SEC to the Big Twelve, but he, he was he was in the Heisman running all year. Mm-hmm. So to tell me that he's not with these other dudes is that's blasphemy in my opinion. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I did I did the uh, Turbo's top ten of the top ten uh, quarterback prospects, and he he was on there, mm-hmm. of course. And I, I had him ranked rather high, and that was even before the combine. Mm-hmm. So I I'm a huge Jalen Hurts fan. Um. Can he make all the plays that Kyler Murray does? Probably ninety five percent of them. So that's he he had a great combine. Lewerke from uh, from Michigan State had an amazing combine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, you won't see his name on my top ten or on this list. But what shocked me with him is I looking at the records that he set for Michigan State. Now again, Michigan State traditionally has not been the air it out offense Mm -hmm. so but he he did it in such a inefficient kind of sloppy way yeah you know so we look at the two quarterbacks before them you know when michigan state was actually was was relevant and Mm -hmm. they were winning football games you had Kirk cousins who was you know when it comes to Kirk cousins and brian larucki there's a huge gap you know there yes and then even after that with connor cook being the next quarterback in line Mm -hmm. Um, I thought I thought there was a lot of things that Connor Cook did at Michigan State that were maybe better than than Cousins at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it hasn't panned out to the next level like it has for Cousins, but those two guys are well, well up above what Lewerke <laughs> will probably ever be. Yes, and probably the dude that shined through the most was where's his name Jordan Love, your mm-hmm. boy. Mm-hmm. I like him a lot. He 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 turned a lot of heads, a lot of heads. Which you know it, he was. He was in my top ten. He was in your. Mm-hmm. Well, you, I think you had him going in the first round in the mock draft. Yes, I do. I have him going. Was it, it the Colts that have the eleventh or twelfth pick or something? There, that's where yeah. I have him going is to the Colts. So we we were obviously pretty high on him. Mm-hmm. Um, so it wasn't a big shocker. However, I mean, he just, in in my opinion, he kind of put that that polish on. Mm-hmm. You know, smoothed everything out. And of course, to, to, to kind of wrap up the combine talk, wasn't a big shocker. That Burrow didn't throw. It mm-hmm. wasn't a big shocker at all. Mm-hmm. And, of course, with Tua, he's still not medically cleared yet. So, you're going to see them at their pro day. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, it Joe Burrow couldn't even do a fucking pro day. And he's still going to still gonna go number one. Yeah. And if he, and if and if the Bengals drop the ball on this, which they possibly could because the Bengals are the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck knows? Well, speaking but. of dropping the ball, there's a lot of people worried right now about Joe Burrow dropping the ball yeah. because of the size of his hands. No? Yeah, now, now the, the question is, is nine, are, are nine inches enough? <laughs> so, and, this is, and, and this goes right here to what I said earlier about not being a huge fan of the combine. Like, the, shit, the, the baggage and the shit that these people pull out like about Burrow, the size of Joe Burrow's hands. Like, they look just fine when he was slinging it around in the national championship game. 
and fucking beating the shit out of arguably the best defense in college yep. football this past season, and he just picked him apart in the second half. Well, that, that hand size looked just fine. The game before that, he was on pace to throw like 10 touchdowns. So. <laughs> yeah. But everyone's like, oh, my God, Cincinnati's a cold-weather city. <laughs> that's when the, that's when your hands, that's when you need big hands to grip the football so it doesn't slip. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop. Jared Goff has nine-inch hands. <laughs> I think he's doing just fine. Mm-hmm. Doing just fine. I, and the, the throws that he's not making are not because of his hand size. No. It's because he, maybe he needs LASIK. <laughs> But 2K crew, let's jump into uh, – uh, what we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to throw a name <clears> at <throat> 2Ks, and he's going to tell me where he has him going. Then I'll tell you where I have him going. We'll have a little discussion and kind of do what we do. So the big elephant, the big elephant in the room, 21st year in the league, first time ever being a free agent, TB12, Tom, the GOAT, motherfucking Brady. Where do you have him going? Well I, said, well, I said a couple of weeks ago when we were doing the mock draft, I, I, I had him chalked up to go into the Raiders. Um, so I'm still gonna, I'm gonna stay with that. Um, in, in my, you know, if I was putting money on it, I would say he stays in New England. Yeah. I just, as a fan of, of not necessarily uh, the Patriots, because I'm not a fan of them at all, but I am a TB12 fan, um, and I'm a fan of the NFL. I want to, I just want to see him somewhere else. I want to see, see some him, parody. I want to see him leave. I want to see him. You know, you got the the Raiders starting their thing in, in Vegas this mm-hmm. year. I just think that there's some excitement there. In their Darth Vader and Stadium. They have. They also have. I want. I think two picks in the first yep. round that, that they can do something with and give him some. Give him some even more help. Um, yeah, you bring Brady in there. What was the possibility of bringing Antonio Brown back after that and and teaming them back up together? I don't know. But I, I, I'm for as a just me being the fan in me is really wanting Brady to to, to to go to the Raiders. I'm I couldn't agree with you more. But I I think at the end of the day he is still a Patriot. But you're right. How fucking awesome would that be? Him and John Gruden. Mm-hmm. You know, two of the, I guess you could call them OGs. You know, c- c- compared to the the current landscape in the NFL, <laughs> and just the. I, I, I want to see them work together. I really do. Because if you look at, and I'm, this is taking nothing away from Derek Carr, but they're two totally different personalities. Mm-hmm. Tom is going to, if if this actually does happen, I might actually become a Raiders fan just to watch them shit all over everybody and just see what happens. And just, I, 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 I would keep my fingers crossed. I haven't looked at the schedule. But Raiders, New England, in that brand new Darth Vader Stadium, <laughs> Belichick walking in. You know he's he's already you know he he is the hoodie, so he he has that mysterious look about him. You know, kind of uh, the emperor esque type deal. <clears throat> Got Luke Skywalker right there, t- TB twelve. The fi- <laughs> the fi- he, he would he, you know he would become the face of that franchise mm-hmm. for if he signs a two year contract. Which if the offer that they have out there is legit. It's a lot of fucking money to turn down. Mm-hmm. Now, everyone's like, "Oh, well, Tom Brady's a millionaire. Gazelle's a, Gazelle's a millionaire. They don't need money." If you look at how much Tom's been getting paid, it is very undervalued. Oh, absolutely. Well, there's a there's a reason for them, you know, being able to win all these Super Bowls yeah. and compete, and and it seems like they're in the Super Bowl every year, if if not every other year. Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for that. It's because of all the pay cuts that he's that he's taken. That he's been he's been able to they've been able to have a, a very good defense. He's been blessed with a very good defense his entire career. Up until this year, he was blessed with some with some weapons on yeah. offense. And and uh, and that's I think what kind of has rubbed him wrong. You know, going into this next season is he's taken all these pay cuts. How come you guys? They, how come they didn't give him any help right. going into the season? You knew that Gronk was leaving. Mm-hmm. You knew that there was going to be a big hole there with that. You have to you have to follow that up with with a with a key free agent, in my opinion, and not just trying to hit hit a receiver in the draft. Even though the even though the draft is loaded, I mean loaded with receivers this year. But you like, you're right, and it's it's just one of those things. Like I I just hope it happens. Mm-hmm. I hope it does. I hope it does. So let's. We're, we're we're gonna go through kind of the free agents and we'll fill in with the, with with the draft picks because like I said a lot of a uh, some some of mine have changed since mm-hmm. the since the combine so next up on the list where do you have Andy Dalton going? 
So if everything follows through with Brady going to the Raiders, I have Andy Dalton as a possible replacement for Brady and New England. I've got him going to the Bears. I think either one would be a very good fit for him. I don't. He's definitely not done. Mm-hmm. He's not a backup. He can start and start in the league. And where with New England, you you're pretty much sign and walk in. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's your starting job because there there really isn't any any other proven quarterbacks on that roster. And if you take the Bears, there there's certain Bear fans that'll tell you the exact same thing. And there's no proven option. Mm-hmm. But at the, I think they could get him at a very good price for maybe a two year deal, mm. which would you know for this especially with the Bears quarterback you know the, the he could sit behind or force the Bears to do something, mm. and I think overall it's going to help the team, and because. Trubisky has one more year left on his deal with the the, the, the club option because mm-hmm. he was a first round pick. If it if it doesn't work, then you just plug Andy Dalton in, kind of like what the what the uh, Titans did with mm-hmm. Tannehill, mm-hmm. you know. So and because those teams are very similar, mm-hmm. very very similar. If they run the ball a little more, yeah, you know, and but I I I wouldn't. I could see both fits being a very good fit. What about Philip Rivers and his bolo tie and twelve kids? Where are they moving? <laughs> well, Philip for for Rivers, I think it's it wouldn't shock me if he just retired, mm-hmm. and when it's all said and done, I think it's all going to come down to um, there's going to be a certain amount of money that he's going to want to going to going to want to to sign a deal in and and move out of there mm-hmm. and. If he doesn't get that amount, or and and I, and in my opinion, I don't know if he will get that amount. I mean, I, I think I've seen him, um, you know, kind of regress a lot here in the last few years. It's not, and I just I, I question a little bit with him how much he has left in the tank. Yeah. Um, well, how how much energy could you have at the end of the day with nine kids? <laughs> exactly. Fuck. So, but but if if he if there was a team that I think that maybe possibly possibly could be a good fit for him for maybe a year or two. Um, and I, and I kind of touched on this earlier when I was talking about Jordan Love because I have Jordan Love going to the Colts. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe bring, maybe the Colts bring Rivers there for a year or two um, and have Jordan Love play behind him. You know, and and and, and maybe it might not take a, a, an entire season of playing behind right. him before he did take that spot. But I think that Rivers is the kind of guy that would uh, would be a good teammate and would take the back seat to somebody that if he if he thought that felt that somebody on that on the team was better than him and gave the team a better chance. He would be. He knows yep. his role, and he would. And he would back off of that. Um, so the, I, I guess the Colts are probably, if he does come back and play, that would be, you know, my, in my opinion, where he would end up. I had I I it, I, I have him retiring, yeah. but for the for the sake of this argu- for this conversation, this you know Rivers to the Colts has kind of been the thing. Mm-hmm. It seems like a very good fit for him, and I mean it's it's essentially it's it's, it's a marriage that's already pre planned. Mm-hmm. So. That that one's kind of easy, but I, I I still think he's he's hanging it up. Mm-hmm. He's hanging it up. It came out that Drew Brees is coming back for another year for, with the Saints, so we we don't really need to touch on that one. But what gets kind of kind of murky is his two backups. Not only <laughs> not only Teddy Two Gloves, but uh, what's his name? I just had it lost it. No. Uh... <clears throat> All right, we'll, we'll we'll get our IT our uh, <laughs> IT staff on that. But Bridgewater and fuck, I can't remember his name. But the, the, uh, all all three of them are set to be free agents, mm-hmm. which in my opinion is very odd. Like how how does that happen? But I think the reason it happens is they Drew Drew Brees has been signing you know one or two year deals and not mm-hmm. five year deal. Mm-hmm. Taysom Hill, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so what from what it looks like. Mr. Hill is going to stay, mm. and Teddy Two Gloves is going to walk. So, where and, you... and Teddy's and Teddy has he's you know he deserves to to yes. have this opportunity. Yes. What, what he stepped in when he stepped in last season when Breeze was down and hurt there for four or five weeks, and he went five and zero. And yeah, five, goes five and zero in it. So he and he so he kind of. Uh, have earned, you know, this opportunity, mm-hmm. and I think the Saints, you know, feel the same way, and they're giving him the opportunity to go, to go and try to. Let's be real, 
You're not going to start. You're not going to earn a starting spot over Drew Brees until no. he decides to hang no. him up, and that might not be for another two, couple years. Yeah, that's very right. And you're just wasting your prime. Mm-hmm. And I, I think with Teddy, we, we can all agree if he if he never has that injury, he's probably still starting for mm-hmm. the for the Vikings. Mm-hmm. So, where do you have him landing this year? I have him going to the Bears. Um, you know, somebody put a little pressure there on uh, um, Mitchy. Mitchy in Chicago and uh, pot, maybe pot, possibly take that job away from him before the before the start of the next season. I think it's pretty safe. I I've, I hear some Bears fans that still go on saying that you know that they think that Mitchy still could be the guy and and uh, I don't I just not never been a fan of him. Um, I don't. I, it's just it's the same thing every year for me with with Chicago Bear football. Very very mediocre quarterbacks yeah. that they've always had. Yeah, and 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 controversial. You know, on the complete other side, you have Lions fans that are bitching that Stafford sucks. Yeah. The dude passes for five thousand yards every year. Never had a running back. No, never. No, every Chicago Bears fan would be like, "Fuck yes, I'll yeah, take that guy." Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. You know what? Here's Mitch. Mm-hmm. And just now, Detroit fans, tell me how how much your quarterback sucks. But I I have Teddy going to the Titans. I think that would be a really cool pairing. Um, I don't. I I think they're going to put more emphasis on re-signing Derrick Henry and letting Tannehill walk. That's where that's where I'm at with that. But I think that would be a very good fit because if you. Tannehill was not, you know, he's not a deep ball threat. Can he do it? Yeah, but it's more of the checkdowns and the you know the twelve yard routes. And Teddy's very good at that. Mm-hmm. You know, Ted, Teddy's never been like he's never had that reputation. You know, having a you know a shotgun for an arm mm-hmm. and shit like that. So, and on top of that, yeah, you've got a great offensive line there and probably the best running back in in the NFL, mm-hmm. and a lot of a lot of weapons and a very good defense. So even if they bring Teddy in and they're just like, don't fuck up and don't turn it over. He did that last year with the Saints for five games, and that's kind of where that led to the resurgence of the Saints defense because Drew's never really had that great of a defense. This Mm -hmm. is probably the best one he's ever had. Mm -hmm. So that the, the situations are very similar, and I think it'd be an easy slot to just slip Teddy in. And just hit hit the ground running. So I I I would see very good success there. But the Bears would be a good landing spot too, to, for, for all the reasons you, uh, you described, just to push push Trubisky to mm-hmm. just not you know get because there really isn't. I think Hoyer was the other quarterback yeah. on the Bears roster. What the fuck's he gonna do? Yeah, nothing. Well, I mean, there was there's just there was so much hype over Trubisky going to the Bears when it all started, and I just think that it's been. He's, it's not that he's been god awful and that no. it was you know a total failure. It's just that he's been mediocre, and mm-hmm. you can't you don't draft quarterbacks in the first round to be mediocre for you. Well, you don't trade up to yeah. get a quarterback yeah. that's mediocre yeah. in the first round. If you're you know at the back end and you draft one, fine. You know that you have your the, the likelihood of of the or the if you miss on that pick it's not as detrimental mm-hmm. because like i said they had to trade up to number 3 i think it was to to draft mitch mm-hmm. i don't i don't think that was a very and, good and, hindsight looking back probably not the best idea yeah and the thing with the bears too is the defense isn't going anywhere i no. understand that they were not near as good as they were the year year prior you know this past season but they're still going to be a top you know three or four defense oh, yeah. at least in the nfl next season mm-hmm. you have to have a good quarterback now you have to be able to you know, you look back a couple of years ago when the defense had the phenomenal season and they lose the game in the playoffs, and everybody wants to you know blame the kicker for everything. And but quarterback put them in the situation in the first place. You yeah. know, how many times did the defense give them the ball on the short side of the field, and you still mm-hmm. can't and you can't get you got to score some touchdowns eventually, and, and not you know bank on your kicker hitting a field goal in the yeah. in the final seconds to 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 win you know that game. So. I put I put more blame on on the quarterback and the offense than I do on yeah. you know the, the the kicker in that situation. You already knew going into that game that your kicking situation sucked. Yeah, it was sketchy. So you got to put points yeah. on you got to put points on the board when you know when those when when those opportunities you know come about. All right, well, and this this dude is I've I've always been a fan of this next guy. I don't know why I've always liked him, uh, Marcus Mariota. I think the the hype from college, which he was a very good quarterback at Oregon, just never really transitioned into the NFL well. 
maybe it's, you know, kind of conversely, you look at Ryan Tannehill, kind of the same way. You get him in the right situation for him, Mm -hmm. and they blossom. Mm -hmm. So I'm not... I'm not saying Mariota's junk. I'm not saying he's a bum. He might just need the right situation. So where where do you have Mr. Mariota landing? <clears throat> I have him going. I, so I, I'm kind of. I don't. I don't really know what to feel. What I feel about Mariota. I don't know if he's a. I don't, I don't know if there's a team in the NFL that's going to sign him to be their starter, to mm-hmm. be their guy. I think there's maybe there's there's maybe a couple teams and that maybe at this point don't know who their quarterback's going to be next season. Yep. And Maybe bring in a guy like Mariota to you know to go through a position battle and and you know see if he can beat somebody out for the starting job. And for that reason, um, I think that there's a lot of question marks with the quarterback situation in Jacksonville. Yep. And so I have the Jaguars taking uh, signing Mariota and giving him a shot. There's a possibility they might hit a quarterback in the draft. Um, you still have Foles there. You don't know what's going on with the, all the injuries. Yeah. There you got. Mr. Stash Gardner Minshew, who Love you know kind of came, came out of nowhere last season and then shocked a lot of people, mm-hmm. and and you know played pretty good football there. Um, so, but he's not. But then again, he's he's not a you know write him in, right? You know, number one quarterback in the NFL. So <clears throat> that's where I see you know Mariota maybe getting a shot with the Jags to you know get a possibly get a get a gig at that starting spot. I have him also going to the Jags, but I have a question mark because I'm I'm the same way. He could fall into a lot of these. He you know him and Teddy kind of kind of are the same, but kind of different to where <clears throat> if you bring him in, you, maybe you're hoping to get your qu- current quarterback a kick in the ass, or obviously a solid backup. Mm-hmm. Obviously a solid backup. But I like I said I, and and the reason I have the Jags, and you're going to see the Jags again on my list because. The Jags overall, I think, even their their defense has been impeccable. They have a great offensive line. Everything around they have they have weapons. Mm-hmm. They have weapons. It's just, I mean, they they have a top five running back down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's been the quarterback that's held this team back for so long. So I have them, not only getting. Uh, signing Mar- Mar- Mariota, but also drafting a quarterback to see what the fuck you just get as ma- mm-hmm. get as much around as much competition and then take the guy that's best. Mm-hmm. And if that means you know cutting some folks or trading or whatever, that's fine. But when you, you need commodities to fill a need like this, and when you have a team that's you know getting back to the, the same thing with the Bears, shoddy quarterback play is not going to get you. Mm-hmm. To the playoffs, or if you do get in the playoffs, you're going to be one and done because any time, any weak spot that you have going into the playoffs is going to be exposed. Mm-hmm. And when your quarterback, the main focus <clears throat> of the sport of football is your weak weak point, man, yeah. I, I don't. It's it, it, you're, you're going to get exposed. Mm-hmm. Another team, another team that kind of uh, wouldn't shock me if they jumped on a, on a train to bring a, you know, a guy like Mariota in um, it would be the Steelers. You know, you look back at last mm-hmm. season with with Roethlisberger. You know, he's he's, he's aging now. There's a oh yeah. You know, I don't. There wasn't a fluke that he just had an injury and, and was mm-hmm. out all last season. There's, I think he's gonna, you're going to start to see that Roethlisberger regress a lot here over the next next couple of seasons, and you got to have a better option than what Pittsburgh threw out. I mean, Pittsburgh was a playoff football team last mm-hmm. year. They were good enough in every facet of the game to be yep. a play, to be in the playoffs. Except for the quarterback situation, after you lose Roethlisberger, you have Mason Rudolph, who was maybe the worst quarterback I've ever seen in the NFL. Yeah, he he. Uh, but they 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 let Landry uh, not Landry Jones, who's the guy that the the, court, the, the XFL quarterback now. Oh, but, Landry Jones. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. I was right. Stop second guessing yourself, <laughs> Turb. But they, they they let him walk, and he was a solid backup mm-hmm. because they had, they were all in on Mason Rudolph. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you got Duck Hodges. Duck Hodges. Duck Hodges. I, I think he played. He way outplayed yeah. Mason. And Rudolph. he did. He did. But he still is not a good quarterback no. and needs to no. stick to you know calling ducks, not yeah. well. throwing ducks. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there you go. I mean, he was. <coughs> so to me, uh, uh, Mariota with the Steelers would not be. A, that would be a, a very nice pickup for them to have a yeah. have a reliable backup that you can go to. A vet. Yes. A, yes. A, a, a grizzled vet, where. Mason Rudolph was not a vet. No, Mason um, Rudolph. It, I did, 
don't even know if he's going to have a job. He was so fucking terrible last mm-hmm. season. The only th- reason why we're still even talking about him is because he got freaking hit in the head with a helmet. Hitting, his he- hitting the head with his own helmet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, I J- Jacksonville is one of those teams where get it, get as many commodities as you can, and then just have an all out fucking battle, and just pick the guy who's left stand, you know, left standing. Now the next one. Is your boy, Dak Prescott. And there's a lot of folks that aren't sold on him. There's a lot of folks that are like, yeah, he's okay. And there's a lot of folks that are saying, mostly Jerry Jones, he's fucking awesome. Now, what whatever whatever camp that you fall in, I really don't think it matters. But do you do you think, even with kind of the I wouldn't say a fallout, but a rocky contract situation. That Jerry Jones has put himself in. Do you mm-hmm. think they franchise mm-hmm. him? Do they sign him? Or do they just let him walk? No, they they're gonna sign him. I mean it's this you can't you're not you cannot let a guy like this get away from you and and, and to for to me, for people to even question how good he is, like do you fucking watch any of any of these game films? Yeah. Like people last season were saying, Oh, the Cowboys, they have to get this deal done with Zeke Kelly. You have to get this you didn't. I, to me, you didn't have to get that job done. Like you, there's. A, they have arguably the best offensive line in the game. Yes. They had. I mean, you had Darren McFadden a few years ago. You know, rushing his way to the fucking Pro Bowl because and and he was not even a fucking close to what Zeke no. is. No. So that tells you right there that you can throw about anybody you fucking want back there. And running backs are just. I mean, you hit them. You hit them every single year. These you get these running backs that you've never even heard of. I mean, look at San Francisco's running backs that they were throwing out there last season. Yeah. Behind that offensive line, so you don't necessarily need that big name. Well, you do need a big name at quarterback. Yes. So for, you for the reasons that we just talked about. Yes. yes. So to me, th- this signing Dak and getting this this out of the way is so much more important than it was last season to get you know Zeke Elliott signed before the season started. Uh, to, and, and in my opinion, I don't think that – I think if this was just up to Jerry Jones, he probably would already have the deal done. Yeah. I'm thinking more of – got Mike McCarthy, who was coming into his first season at Dallas, which probably the hardest you know coaching gig in the NFL, maybe the hardest coaching gig in all of sports. Yes. And he's never, he's never worked with Dak, obviously, until now. And mm-hmm. so maybe he's the one that's saying, hey, if there's, if there's any way that we can pull a franchise tag – so that I can, we can test it and see how things even work out. Maybe yep. we don't. Maybe we won't like each other. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to sign into that five-year deal, or four, four, probably five-year deal mm-hmm. on there. And turns out that you know five, six weeks in the season that you just don't like the fucking guy, and yeah. man, Dak don't like you. So, and <clears throat> you know, it's it's when you brought up McCarthy is a very good point because you look at him coming from Green Bay. Where Aaron Rodgers is a very different athlete than Dak Prescott. I'm not saying one's better than the other, but mm-hmm. they're they're obviously different. Mm-hmm. So I I if that's the case, it wouldn't shock me at all. But I think I think as Dallas fans need to realize is that you can't keep all three: mm-hmm. Cooper, Dak, mm-hmm. and Zeke. One yeah. of them's got to go, and it, it's uh, obviously it's Cooper. Mm-hmm. Not to say he's he, he didn't contribute a lot, but Towards the end of the season, he was almost non-existent. And then you have Michael Gallup stepping up yeah, towards at the end of last season, and I think that the, that he can take over the number one mm-hmm. role there, and number, they're going to be just fine. Or find another one in the draft. And people, you know, people that are ripping on Dak, you know, for for not signing the deal and and mm-hmm. and you know requesting forty mil, like you have to remember, this guy has been underpaid for yes. his entire career in Dallas. He wasn't supposed to jump in there and be the starter and, and you know, season number one, but because of an injury to Tony Romo, stepped well, in there. Tony Romo also got fucking paid. Yes. And but because of that injury, Dak was forced to step in mm-hmm. there and be the starting guy and he take, takes him to the playoffs. Yep. So he's been underpaid his entire time in at Dallas. It's time to pay him now the money that he deserves and we'll move on from there. It's a very and if you kind of take a step back and look at it, it's a very similar situation to what the Seahawks had with Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. Now that you could compare Dak and Russell Wilson skill set wise a lot closer than obviously Dak and Aaron Rodgers. They're they're I'm not saying they're the same player, but if you look at the teams around them, very very similar. Mm-hmm. Great defense, great running game, and great quarterback play. Mm-hmm. They're 
kind of uh, it, the, you could draw similarities between those teams very very well. And, and if you use and if you do use the franchise tag on them, you have another good quarterback by the name of Patrick Mahomes that could mm-hmm. be signing his deal next season. And if you don't sign Dak at forty mil this year, and Dak goes out and has another season like he price did this tag year, just went up. that price tag is going to shoot up. I'm not saying it's going to be in 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 uh, in um, Mahomes' area because mm. probably nobody's going to be in that area. No. But that price tag is going to be higher than forty because yeah. I think Mahomes is going to go above fifty. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely going to be transcending. And but then again, what if you take you know we we already touched on it with Brady, you know how much how much do you push that envelope and take the well then then again it depends on the CBA which mm-hmm. we'll talk about a little bit later, but how much how big of a chunk of that salary cap pie are you going to take? Because if if you're taking a lot, that means that there's they have to be creative other other places. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, it, and I, mean, I think Brady was in kind of a, a pretty special situation where his wife was making oh, yes. more, more money than him. Than him so yeah. it's okay. But for guys like you know Dak and Mahomes, you know I, I I don't know enough about their personal life, but I'm guessing that their that their significant others aren't making the amount of money that Giselle was making. Yeah. So. You gotta get you gotta take your fucking money when you can get it and, and stop doing State Farm commercials. Especially when, yeah, especially when you're an NFL football player, you know your your ne- the next day is not always guaranteed for you mm-hmm. to be out there playing. So, get you need to get your money and when you, when the opportunity comes about. And it, for everyone saying sitting back saying, "Oh, these players make too much anyway." Oh, fuck well, off. You know what? How much fucking money they make for these art organizations? Yeah. I hate that argument. Yep, yep. But we'll we'll, we'll save that for another show. All right, next on the list, we've already mentioned him. So, Brian Tannehill. I have him going to the Chargers. I think that'd be a very good fit for him if, like I said, if he's not still with Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And, again, Tennessee's one of those teams where it's like, all right, well, here, here's the slice of pie we can give you. Is it going to be good enough? Because that, mm-hmm. that, that's all the mm-hmm. money we have. Where I, whereas I think with the Chargers – you know, with with Rivers leaving, that opens up a lot more salary cap space, and I think he'd be a very good fit there. I mean, if you look at, I'm not saying Melvin Gordon is the same running back as Derrick Henry, but Melvin Gordon's a very good running back, probably catches the ball better out of the backfield mm-hmm. than uh, than Henry. They have more established, I would say, uh, weapons in 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 San Diego. So I think Tannehill would would, f- I think he would do very well over there. And it's, I think when 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 you take a look at it from the other side with the Chargers moving on from Rivers, Tannehill doesn't turn the ball over nearly as much. At least this last year, mm-hmm. you, when he's with Miami, I mean you can throw a lot of that out because I mean Miami was junk the whole team, but it it would be a very easy transition. And the Chargers fans are going to get a quarterback that's. You know, a vet has been through it, gotten his ass beat, is still there, and like I said, doesn't turn the ball over nearly the clip that Rivers does. Where do you have him going? I have Tannehill staying with the Titans. I mean, just when he took over took over the job there last season. I mean, when going down the stretch of that season, going into the playoffs, they were maybe one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I would say that there was probably a lot of teams going into the playoffs that didn't want to face them at that time. You could argue they were the hottest team aside from the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was – well, the, yeah, especially in the AFC, mm-hmm. for sure. For and, sure. You, you know, and it's, it's no secret. They got you, they, the games in the playoffs, they relied highly on Derrick Henry. Yeah. And – but he – but – Tannehill still had to run, run the show out there, and he didn't make very many mistakes, and he did what he needed to do. And they won. And and bottom line, you win. Yep. You know, they win a game against the Patriots, against the Goat, mm-hmm. and you go into the next game and win a game against the team against the MVP. Yep. So <laughs> that says a lot um, for, to me. If if the Titans are to, to you know let him walk and, and go and look somewhere else, I just think that uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I think that a lot of the people, a lot of those. Uh, teammates in that locker room bought into him, and yeah. I think it would probably piss off a lot of those guys to mm-hmm. be like, "Hey, we this guy rode us into, you know, the conference championship game here, and or not the uh, division, no conference champ- yeah. championship, and a- AFC championship, yeah, AFC yeah. championship game, and now you're gonna just just gonna let him walk? Like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, especially considering if you would have asked 
Titans fans at the beginning of the season be like, yo, you guys are going to make the conference t- championship game. Yeah. They'd be fucking stoked. Mm-hmm. No one no one saw this run in them coming. Hmm. No one. And kudos to Mike Vrabel for making that switch because, unfortunately, as much of a Mariota fan as I am, if he sticks with Mariota, they're not making the mm-hmm. playoffs. Mm-hmm. They're not making the playoffs at all. So the next one on the list is your fantasy football boyfriend, J- Seamus Jameis Winston. You, which you, is so which is, – and it is very true because <laughs> every single time fantasy football team I have ever had, I have Jameis on there. But, God, I don't know if there's somebody in the, in the NFL that I dislike as much as Jameis. Like, just the shit that he does just drives me nuts. Well, we, there's a difference when you're drafting fantasy football players and they make you money. You don't have to agree yeah, with what the fuck exactly. they do. And that's the, thing, that's the thing. He probably will throw three or four picks every fucking Sunday he touches the field. He's going to throw three But he's going to throw three, three or four touchdowns. He's yeah. probably going to throw throw the ball about 40 times, and he's probably going to, at the end of the game, have about 400 yards. Yep. So, Fantasy football-wise, that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I have him staying with the Bucks. Same I, here. I do. I Same do. here. I, I do. It would not shock me if the Bucks go do something, and if maybe one of these bigger quarterbacks. There's, I mean, there's a lot of legit quarterbacks in this draft. But if somebody, you know, I don't think the Bucks are going to use a first round draft pick no. on a quarterback. But if they have, if there's, if they find a guy that's in there in the third, fourth round, and I, I think that they'll jump all over that to, just to put somebody behind him. There's, you got to, you got to put somebody uh, uh, behind a guy like Jameis that's going to put some pressure on him and mm-hmm. and and force him to, you know. Keep keep improving and keep getting better, and hopefully LASIK works out. Yeah, Ten, five years into the league, one would thought he would have done that a lot earlier. But moving on, the last kind of uh, established vet, because like we we both said that TB12 is on his way to Vegas, which I have a feeling that the the Raiders aren't going to carry him and Derek Carr on the same roster. Where do you have Derek Carr landing? Mm. This is one I didn't even write down. I haven't really thought about it. I haven't gone um, to Denver. Yeah. Even though it's same I'm, same division, but Denver's one of those that I'm pretty sure Joe Flacco isn't the, the answer there. No, I was I was but, really and I was pretty um encouraged by what I saw out of that out of Drew Locke mm-hmm. down the stretch last season. Um and I think that they that they that they feel like they have their guy there. Um maybe what, to me, Denver, what they need the most is, is some, give him some more weapons. You yeah, know, you, you, you traded basically Emmanuel your only Sanders. weapon that you had. You traded away. Yeah. Um, man, I gotta think of, think for a second on this one. With while you're thinking, I, mean, I never. I, I obviously we talked about <laughs> it, first off with with Brady. Um, you know, I'm rooting for him to go to the Raiders. I mm-hmm. want him to leave there. In all honesty, I don't think he's leaving there. I think he's staying. No. So I think that car. Stays with with the Raiders also. Card be a good fit for the Bears. Mm-hmm. He would. Uh, I mean, he he's he's the type of guy that you could slot in, mm-hmm. or you could throw him in. I mean, the Jags are another one. Everything's so up in the air with a lot of these teams. Where, or even, even hell, if if uh, Tannehill's not in Tennessee, the Titans. Mm-hmm. And Carr's a guy that can open the, open up the. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can. He's got a cannon for an arm, and he he's been serviceable. Oh yeah. He, I mean, he, if if he doesn't break his leg, he wins the MVP wins that the MVP. year, hands Absolutely. down, hands mm-hmm. down. And then I think it's mostly the Raiders' fault for just going into oblivion and dumpster fire. Mm-hmm. And again, they were they were a team that had an amazing offensive line, which is one of the reasons why. You know, you, you get uh, Latavius Murray had a breakout season, and there's been and Jacobs right now has had an amazing mm-hmm. rookie season because of that. And you put someone, you know, Derek Carr can with pretty much any of the teams that we talked about. Well, hell, what if him, him and Brady just traded places? Mm-hmm. I think Belichick could win with De- Derek Carr just as easy as TB12. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he's he's kind of a wild card, and that's why I I figured. Denver to be one of those places to where they've missed so often. Mm-hmm. Why not get someone that's established? Joe Flacco to me was he had one or two great years, but his great years came with historic defenses. Yeah. And then they paid him. Yeah, and once they paid him, they had to you know well, they, 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 they had paid a lot him. of other guys walk. And then you get Ray Lewis retiring, Ed Ed Reed mm-hmm. retiring. So you're getting the the linchpins of that defense. 
you know, the I mean, first ballot Hall of Famers, mm-hmm. no doubt. When you lose that, you can't really replace that with free agent money because you're paying Flacco all of this. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I, like I said, he, he you could you could pencil him in pretty much anywhere. Well, let's get to the draft picks, and like like we said, you know, we'll, we'll kind of go go through this a little bit quicker because these are just our feelings. I'm sure everyone everyone that we slotted down is going to be a good fit for where. Uh, where we say and like i said there's might be some changes you know just because of the uh the combine so i'm pretty sure you and i both agree that joe burrow is going to the Bengals. yes and if they don't i don't know what to say Uh, (laughs) i mean this is the this is and there's now there's been rumors i mean but this is part of what the, the the combine is is guys run around in tight shorts and the rumor mill starts. Mm-hmm. Everyone's, you know, hell, hell, they've got, you know, the the Redskins saying they're not going to draft Chase Young and they're going to draft Tua or they're going to even jump up and get the pick from the Bengals so they can get Joe Burrow and the Lions are sitting here going, well, we'll just draft Tua if it comes to us. <laughs> but at pick three, if Chase, Young's in, if Chase Young's there, we're not taking Chase Young. Just so it's fucking stupid. Mm. So... Rumor mill a blazing. I, I I think we can put this one to bed. Mm-hmm. I really do. What about Tua? Where do you got Tua going? Tua have going to the Dolphins. I still think that um, I mean, there's a possibility that maybe uh, the Dolphins trade up mm-hmm. to Detroit's pick for that. Um, but even even if that trade doesn't happen, um, Dolphins have the fifth pick. I think that's where Tua will end up yeah. will end up going to. I think that's the safest bet to, to, yeah. right here. I mean, there's a very good op, you know chance that maybe a team like the Chargers mm-hmm. do move up, or the Colts, or, or you know, a possibility that they try to move up in there and take Detroit's pick. But I think for the, to be to take make the safest bet, <coughs> um, I think the Dolphins are going to be the team. Detroit. Detroit taking two just doesn't make any sense to me. I I don't think it makes sense either. But that's where I'm going with them mm. because Detroit does Detroit shit like this. Oh yeah, yeah. Either that or they'll. Yeah, I've. You have with Detroit to me. It's a it's a fucking no brainer. Take the take Akuda the the defensive back from Ohio State. You you have question marks with with Slay. Mm-hmm. Your defense is fucking terrible. Your offense is is manageable, especially when you have Stafford out there. Yeah. Like, you have legit wide receivers. There's you know I've heard a lot of rumors about you know possibility of maybe bringing a guy like Melvin Gordon back or um into you know be the running back for them. <clears throat> But to me, there's no not really any question marks on the offensive side of the ball. Your defense mm-hmm. fucking sucks. No, there has and you been. have an opportunity to maybe take, maybe get the best, one of the best lockdown corners in the mm-hmm. draft since Jalen Ramsey. Yep. Fucking get that guy. There have been rumors out there that they're that was Simmons, the mm-hmm. m- middle linebacker from Clemson. He had an amazing, mm-hmm. amazing combine, and he shot up. He was he was already a top ten pick, mm-hmm. but he. According to Mel Kiper today, he's, he's he he solidified himself in the top five. Yeah, and I would be good. I would be just. I would be completely fine with either one of those guys. But if you fucking waste your pick on Tua, when you already have Matthew Stafford as your quarterback, but Matt, like, hey, everyone hates Matt Stafford, yeah. bro. That's why. That's why I haven't taken Tua just so people's heads can fucking explode. <laughs> well, speaking of the Tigers, they beat the Yankees ten to four. It's a positive. What about Justin Herbert? Herbert, I think. At the end of at the end of the day, ends up with the Chargers. Um, you know, obviously the Chargers losing or, or letting uh, uh, Philip Rivers walk. Who they have out there now? They have Tyrod Taylor. Um, yep. You know, and he's manageable. He could he could be the he could be the starting quarterback there. Um, but I think if they end up using a draft pick early on a guy like Justin Herbert, I think Herbert's going to be the guy. Um, so I, I I just think that that pick makes a lot of sense for him. I have him going number five to the Dolphins. Cause like I said, the Lions are going to do lion shit and fuck this whole thing up, and poor Tua is going to be stuck in Detroit for and not play for three years. And next one up is your boy Jordan Love. Yeah, I'm going to the Colts. I just I I really like this kid. I think mm-hmm. that there's a there's a chance. I mean, I, I don't I don't I think Burrow is going to be the the best quarterback yeah. out of this class. Um, Tua has a has the opportunity to be that um, if he stays healthy. If he can stay healthy, I'm I'm really interested in watching his his pro day mm-hmm. and seeing him throw the ball. And I and I'm obviously the the entire NFL is is yes. I mean super interested in that. But 
This Jordan Love kid, I, I don't think he gets as near as much hype because he comes from Utah State, and a lot of people haven't really necessarily seen him play. Right. But in some of the games and and in some of the game films that I've watched of him and just some highlights, it's like, and even at the combine, I mean, he arguably had the best day of any of yes, these quarterbacks did. at the combine. Yes, he did. And with everything happened with the Colts losing Andrew Luck to you know retiring early, um, might have another four letter last name that starts with L. Yeah, starting there. Hey, they 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 get almost it's almost like live laugh love. <laughs> they've got they've got a bunch of them. I haven't going to Carolina. I haven't going to Carolina. I'm still still not sold that Cam's going to be there, which he, we probably should have put him on the list too. But I I think that he at the end of the day I I think he's he's still still in Carolina. Mm-hmm. But I think he'd be a really good fit because. I what what has it been like three years since Cam's played a whole year, mm-hmm. so maybe the, the the punishment that he's taken is uh, kind of building up, and I, I I don't see him being in Carolina if he is mm-hmm. much longer. Mm-hmm. So, what about let's go Jake from State Farm, Mister Jake from where do you have him going? Yeah, this this one's um he this is a guy that I could see that maybe. Um, a team like Carolina drafting, mm-hmm. you know, not not in the first round, not right. with the first round pick, but um, you know, somebody that that falls in there. Uh, I don't, I, I just don't think that he's going to be a, uh, you know, in the, picked in the top two rounds. I think he's mm-hmm. more of a guy that falls in maybe to possibly round three, round four or five is probably more of a safe bet for me. Um, I'm just not not very impressed with this kid. I'm just not. I, I know that you hyped him up. Uh, I mean, even I when did. we had Christian on here last year, Christian hyped him yeah. up also. Um, I, I just he's never he had a very underwhelming season. Yeah, yeah. and he had a, and he yeah. had a pretty underwhelming combine also. Yeah. So I just don't. I, could he prove me wrong and be you know a great mm-hmm. quarterback in the NFL? Absolutely. I just don't think that he's a, a sure bet like some of these other kids. I have him going to the Colts. Like I said, I'm 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 still. Even though he was kind of underwhelming, let's say, I think the upside is very good, and I think that'd be. I mean, you got a great offensive line. Marlon Max is an established running back. You have the weapons on offense, and he, in my opinion, is a he'll he'll be an upgrade to Jacoby Brissett, which, mm-hmm. again, maybe another team that is you know sputtering because of the quarterback mm-hmm. play. So, I think he could give him a spark. What about Jacob Eason? You know, this is a I like this kid more than I like um like more than I like Fromm. And he, he could be one that um you know possibly could sneak into mm-hmm. into this into the first round and possibly second round. Probably second round would be a little bit safer bet. Um but I, I look at another at a team like the Panthers again here. Um I look at a team if m- maybe you know the Chargers don't want to you know jump on Herbert or Colts don't want to jump on a guy like Love necessarily in the first round, mm-hmm. and you know they go with something else um, that maybe they're a team that can come back and, and and grab grab him in the second round or something like that. So I I don't necess- I, he's borderline first rounder for me, um, but I think safer bet he's a second round round pick for me. That's kind of where I'm looking at him too, and I, I I've got him going to Tampa. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be a great. Kind of kicking the ass to mm-hmm. to Jameis and just kind of see where that goes from there. And kind of the you know we we already touched on Jalen Hurts and his amazing combine. Um, where do you see him going? You know, and you and you we touched on earlier a little bit too with um, you know other teams being interested in and in, and in maybe him playing possibility of playing some different positions mm-hmm. and. And that's that's he's, he's that's kind of intriguing to me because he's he's a kid that well for one even in his time at Oklahoma he, his numbers were more impressive as a runner mm-hmm. than they were as a passer you know he improved as a passer there but he was still more of a runner I mean there was games that that you look at the box score and he's carrying the ball for 25 26 times and throwing the ball you know 15 to 20 times mm-hmm. um, so it, it, he's it intrigues me a little bit that maybe the possibility that he could be a wide receiver you look at it like uh, Terrell Pryor from Ohio State mm-hmm. and. You know, comes in, doesn't work out as a quarterback in the NFL, ends up being a pretty legit wide receiver there for for right. a couple of years. Um, so maybe he's 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 somebody that I look at that just because he he's a very good athlete, he's proven mm-hmm. that, and two, he wins fucking football games. That he does. He wins does. games. So he's the kind of guy that um, maybe not make maybe doesn't make it in the NFL. 
as a quarterback, but I think that there's a lot of opportunities for him to step up as a as a wide receiver on teams. I have him still still as a quarterback. And I have him going to a team that I think if they could get him at the right in the right round, it would I'm I'm definitely not saying it's a gamble. And I know I'm gonna catch shit for this. But him and Lamar Jackson have a very similar game. Is he as elusive and fast as Jackson? Not a bit. But you're right. He can run the ball. He can pass. But he's a much better passer Mm -hmm. than than Lamar Jackson Mm -hmm. is, hands down. But if you get a similar coaching style, you know, kind of offense style that they that they have in Baltimore, and I'm going to draw the 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 team. I'm going to say you can you'll be like, well, the the similarities between this team and the Ravens are very similar. And that team's Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Both teams have great running backs. Mm -hmm. Both teams have great defenses. And if you, if you pattern hurts off of uh, Jackson, granted, like I said, he's not going to outrun people to the sideline like, like Lamar Jackson. But he's, I think he's a smarter runner where he doesn't where he, where he doesn't have that blazing speed to fall back on. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think he would be just as effective, but doing it a little bit a little bit differently in Jacksonville as Baltimore mm-hmm. did with, with with Lamar Jackson. Where you're not he's you're not putting him in a in a situation where he's gonna be a drop back passer. Mm-hmm. But when you put him in a, a situation like that which would feature all of his skills I think I think that's a huge upside, and like I said, if, if the Jags can get him in like the third round, mm-hmm. I think that'd be a bonus. Mm-hmm. I think that I think that that would work out very well, just judging by the the way the the, the teams are so similarly yeah. uh, patterned after each other. Well, that's it. We, we've we, we've fixed the NFL and the and the quarterback carousel here, and. We're getting up to that hour mark, so I, but I just want to get your get your opinion on the CBA 2Ks. And for those of you, we are doing a YouTube-only little snippet at the end here, so don't leave us quite yet. 17-game season, redone. Well, there's obviously many layers to this, mm-hmm. but the ones that you know were brought up, made, you know, that basically made the news was the 17-game season – the increased pay for like the middle of the road players, and they they're taking was it one more team into the playoffs? So the first the number one seed would have a buy. Mm-hmm. They'd be the only one with a buy. No no buy for the for the uh, second seed. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Because mm, I mean the their players are kind of torn about this. Yeah, and 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 for them, I understand it. Um, f- for me as a fan, I mean, I don't mind one more week of, one more week of football, and uh, you know, for the number one team to to have a bye in in the playoffs, I think that's a very good advantage. Um, but to that- me, I just I think it's um, you know, any, anytime you try to change, you have you've had something going for so long that's that's been it's consistent, it's been the same, and then mm-hmm. you try to you try to change something and and you know i know me personally in my life i don't like change right and you look at for so for all these you know these professional athletes that are the these are the ones that it, that it affects because mm-hmm. these are the guys that are going out there and putting their body on the line every single week weekend um you know i don't know i i'm not i got mixed feelings on it i've heard some people talk about you know if you're going to do this do you add another bye week for these teams it, it, the, the way this is constructed the answer is no yeah what they're basically doing is only doing three preseason games and basically adding adding mm-hmm. another another uh, which we, we all know no no starter plays a whole fucking preseason mm. game. A lot of them are for for lack of better words are junk. Mm-hmm. And granted, there are some players that get their time to shine and they take take it and run with it, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Which is awesome. My big thing is. And getting back to like this, cha- these changes and the changes in baseball, when something's working, why, why, why fuck with mm-hmm. it? What you're what you're trying to do is, there actually can be a such thing as too much of a good thing. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, when you add the 
and I, I know they went from 14 to 16 games. I understand that. Now they're, they're only looking to add one more game, and yes, they're, obviously the salary cap will be different. Everything will be re- readjusted for 17 paychecks mm-hmm. instead of 16. Mm-hmm. But why, why fuck with something that's not broke? Mm. And I, I, I'm almost positive that every year the NFL gets more and more, like their viewer, viewership increases every year. Yep. Baseball, you can kind of argue that there's they're kind of decreasing. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the reasons that we've talked about it, one of the reasons they're decreasing, they make stupid fucking rules. Mm-hmm. But with the NFL, you you are the king dick when it comes to the the the, 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 top, like the major four sports. Mm-hmm. You have the biggest swinging dick in the in the room. Why fuck with it? Mm-hmm. Why fuck with it? So, and like I said, there's the, the the players, they're, they actually sent out, they're, 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 every player is going to vote, not just the player rep. So mm-hmm. that's how kind of divided these, these, the sides are. And Mike, Mike Golick kind of put it, put it very, very simply. He's like, there's no way in any negotiation that the first thing that comes across isn't met with some resistance. Mm-hmm. That's why it's called negotiation. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Do we, I think, any other loose ends we need to tie up there, 2Ks? So. All right. Well, audio side, this is where we leave you. And you. by now, you know the drill. Jim Rome, if you haven't heard of us, you better get us on your radar because we're coming for you. All right. YouTube, what's up? What's up? What's up? Can talk some college hoops. I'm going to talk some college hoops and... I guarantee Kyle is going to be stoked about this because we're we're going to talk Michigan State. We're going to talk Michigan. We're actually watching Michigan Ohio State right now, and the question I'm going to, which everyone knows, you're you're Tom Izzo's biggest fan, two K. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you're living under a rock, last night, Friday, Saturday night, Michigan State that was at Maryland, correct? Yes. They go into Maryland, and I, 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 they dominated the whole game. They got out to a quick start and never looked back. Mm. Maryland's a tough team. No, oh, we've talked about them for the last two weeks being yeah. the best team in the Big Ten, and and it's no secret that the Big Ten is the best conference in college basketball. So if you're the best team in that conference, yes. Now my question to you is how how does it, how does a team with that be that inconsistent? I don't understand it. But when you when you go into someone's house and just take a dump right in the middle of their of their court and just mm-hmm. say this is mine, mm-hmm. like that's basically what the Spartans did last night. Mm-hmm. They were I think they opened the game on like a twelve to two run. But it, every part of me watching that game was like, man, they're, they're just going to give this shit right back, like they've done with so many games mm-hmm. this this year. They they'll get off to a hot start and then just can't close. Mm-hmm. So for them to. Uh, does it bring into question if Maryland's the best team in the in the in the Big Ten right now? No, no, I, I just think they're still the best team. Yeah, absolutely. I think but again, it's that it, chalk it up to Tom Izzo magic. When I mean, hell, it was if you if you think about it, every other year. Yesterday was March first. Oh, it's Jesus a leap year. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> So it's no secret that Michigan State has a has a very talented team. I mean, yeah. this is they were the number two team in the nation to start the season. So number one, we're number one, yeah, mm-hmm. number one team to start the season. So the talent's there. Yeah, on you know, and we talk about inconsistency, you know, being there. When are we gonna fucking point the finger at Tom Izzo? Maybe that's I'm the reason saying. why they're not, not why they're not consistent. So I don't. I, I and I and I knew it. I knew this conversation was coming when we watched this game last night, and Michigan yep. State won it. That everybody's <laughs> going to be like, "Oh, it's, it's March now." It's and Izzo this time. Is what, this is what Izzo does every year in, the, in in March. It's Izzo time, baby. And this is when he gets hot. But and and everybody will just look totally look over this entire season, and and arguably they're the most inconsistent team in college basketball. Yes, by far. But have the potential to be arguably the best team in college mm-hmm. basketball when everything's clicking. I don't. I did. When when it comes down to it, yes, it is. Tom Izzo is the is the captain of that ship, mm-hmm. so he's the one that directs him. And, and obviously, the players still got to play. I I completely understand that. 
And basketball is a weird thing where, you know, you can one day you're, you know, you're, you shoot 70% and the next game you play, you shoot 30%. Mm -hmm. Just sometimes there's, there's a, there's a lid on the hoop. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But yeah, it's, I, I don't know if it, uh, I, I do know it, it is part of, part of the reason is, uh, is though the other, ha the other part of the argument might be is that it just goes to the parody in basketball this year. Mm -hmm. Cause if, if we're, if we're beating down Tom Izzo's door, we have to do the same thing with coach K this year in Duke. Mm -hmm. They were ranked number one as well. They keep losing games that they shouldn't. Granted, they're, I think they have three or four less losses than Michigan State. But do they have as big like, – like that win against Maryland was a huge win. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure Duke has many big wins like that in their resume. So if we're – if we're, you know – like I said, if if we're beating beating up Izzo, we, we have to at least take take a step back and look at all the other top coaches – that are losing game. Um, Coach Cal in, in Kentucky is mm -hmm. kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. I don't think Kentucky was ranked number one this year. I, I could be wrong, but I don't remember them. And if they were, it wasn't long. Yeah, and I think they, and I, actually, I think they were. Yeah. And they got beat right at, you yeah. know, the week that they moved to number one, they got beat. And they're another team that lost a game this season to, you know, kind of a team that I don't even know if I've ever heard of no, them. No. And Duke has a loss just like that on there. On, Yes, their season. Yeah, and Duke just lost a big game here a uh, few days. They, they lost two games in a row, I think, which that doesn't happen under – I mean, granted, it was a double overtime game, mm -hmm. and everyone was kind of blowing everything out of proportion. Oh, this is the most points allowed in uh, in the Coach K era. Well, motherfucker, they played double overtime. <laughs> what do you expect? Yeah, so Kentucky lost early in the season to Evansville. Yep. And then uh, – <clears throat> um... Duke lost to SF Austin. I'm assuming that's in Texas. <laughs> Just Your guess it, is as good as mine. <laughs> so yeah, um, maybe uh, like I said, I, Coach Izzo does deserve some of this blame. Probably the majority of it, but you have to pencil in at least a little bit of just the parody of this season. Now. With some of the like, like, like with with Coach K, it's only been this year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> are, are they still going to make a run in uh, March Madness? Yep. I would put more money on Duke going farther than Michigan State, just because of the and the you you don't C Cassius Winston cannot win you every game. Mm -hmm. He can sure as hell try. Mm -hmm. Duke just has more weapons, mm -hmm. and well, I. I let me put it this way they have more weapons that show up more consistent mm -hmm. so better coached yeah yeah but i, I think we're coached. you know we're winding down the last week of the regular season uh for for uh college hoops and next next weekend i believe is the uh the conference uh tournament start correct mm -hmm. one more week one more week yep. and then after that we get selection sunday and then we get the dance. Mm -hmm. We get the dance. Probably the most action-packed Thursday and Fridays of the year are, are, are the first two. Mm -hmm. the, the opening days are amazing. They're amazing. And also can be very frustrating because you see your bracket go down the shitter. Yep. So this year, this year I have a feeling it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of brackets like that. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of brackets like that. Will there be a perfect bracket this year? No. No. Man, no. I don't think so either. The only way it would be if – someone's one of the players moms fills it out <laughs> and she picks you know obviously her son's team to go win it and ends up being like a a nine seed win it or something weird like that which ha having a nine seed win it this year i think it might you know we they're gonna shock me no Nothing shot. i mean after watching this entire season play out i don't know if there's anything that's gonna shock me you know we we saw a couple years ago was the first uh 16 over a one mm -hmm. seed i think we could no, this year, this year it can happen. We've again. watched it happen. We've watched yeah. it happen multiple we, we times this season. <laughs> I mean, now that I was looking at um, after I said something about Duke losing that game to SF Austin, I have no fucking idea what conference mm -hmm. they play in. Um, they are out. Of, they are in in, in Texas. Mm. I did did figure that far that that out. But they are twenty six and three. 
So yeah. I get it. They don't play, you know, in a conference that, that you know, that's, that has a lot of loaded basketball mm-hmm. teams. But you don't go 26-3 and three unless you're a pretty good team. So. Right. right. All right. Well, uh, I think that wraps up the – we gave you about 10 extra minutes there, YouTube crew. We just want to say thank you. Go ahead and give a like, subscribe. Leave a comment. Let's get a conversation going. Obviously, there, you're going to have different opinions than us on all of the things we just talked about. So voice your opinion. We don't mind a nice little conversation because that's what that's, that's if you're not playing sports, talking about sports is the next best, <laughs> the, the, the next best thing. So, two K crew, we'll, we'll leave you out. We'll leave you with that. Have a great week. We'll catch you next week. And I don't really know how to sign this off, so we'll just say bye.